Personal Capital is a great budgeting app that is completely free. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use that app. Hey there, Brittany Flammer here with videos here on my channel every week about budgeting and money saving tips for you and your family. I personally prefer to use Personal Capital on the computer because most of the time when I'm working on our budget or updating it, I am at my computer. If you're interested in learning how to use it on your computer, check out my video, I'll put a link in the description box below, and at the end of this video, I'll have it playing right up there. But in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use the app on your phone. When you open it up after you've logged in, it's automatically gonna take you to this screen, which is showing you your net worth. So this is my current net worth right here. And if I drag my finger along it, it will show me on a specific day what my net worth was. If you want to edit, you click these three dots up here and you can change the automatically. The date range is 90 days, but you can click on this month or up down to a custom where you set specific dates. And then if you scroll down, you can see for assets, We've got $68,000 in assets and zero in liabilities because I haven't added any of our debt. I'll show you how to link accounts in just a sec. Um, so this is gonna show us for cash, all of our cash accounts total up to 8,840. And right here, if I scroll down, these are our various cash accounts. And then when I get to investment accounts, it's gonna tell me my total investments equal 54,000. And these are our investment accounts. And if we scroll down, it'll take us to other assets. Um, so if you want to add an account, click link more accounts. And I want to link our credit card. So it's right here. I can just click on Capital One or if it doesn't show up here, you can type it into search right here. But I'm gonna click on that, just click continue. And then it's going to ask us to log in. So you will just type in your login information for that account. And if it will have you select the account and you have to authorize them retrieving the information. It'll take just a second, but then it is going to upload all of the information from that account. And if you want to add another account, if you have more checking accounts or savings accounts or investments accounts, you just click link another account. Or if not, we can click done. So now we can see under credit card, I owe $207. Now that we've glanced at our net worth, let's go over to the hamburger over here, the top left, three lines, click on that. Um, the net worth is what's on top, but then you can also go to transactions. Let's click on the transactions and it's by default gonna show you all your transactions, but you can filter by deposits or expenses and alike everything else. You can click those three dots and edit the date range right up here. Or if you want to add another account, you can always click link account here when you want to add more accounts. But let's go on and edit. Let's say Walmart. This shows up as a general purchase merchandise. Let's click on that and I'll show you how you can edit it. You can change the description. I wanna leave that because it's pretty obvious, but it comes under the category general merchandise. Let's say you wanna change it. You can click on it and you can scroll through and pick one that they already have here. Let's say I bought pet stuff there. So I'm just gonna click on pets and it's going to change the category and I'll click save. So it will save it as pet care. But then let's say Kohl's. I wanna click on that purchase. It says general merchandise. Let me edit that. Let's say, click on the category and let's say I want to add a category. I'll click the plus sign up here and it has to come in one of three types. It has to be either income, expense, or a transfer. So this is an expense, but let's say I wanna create a new category called clothing. I'll click done. It automatically changes that to clothing and I'll click save. Okay, now let's say we wanna split a purchase. So let's say this Walmart purchase, I bought more than things for more than one category. So it automatically comes from general merchandise. Let's click split this transaction and we'll say, I don't want general merchandise. We say I want groceries. Five of it was from groceries. So I will type in $5. And it's telling me I have 879 left to remain. I'll click save, but it's not gonna save it because I have zero dollars in this category. So we'll click on that and we'll say it wasn't general merchandise, it was clothing. Click on clothing and I'll type in how much it was. And it's telling me the remainder is 879. So I'll return and save it. 
So now you can see there's a little split sign. It's showing me that it's split and it will show up. The clothing portion will show up in the clothing category and the groceries will show up on the grocery category. Let's go back over to all transactions. Right here, these are grayed out because these are pending transactions. If you scroll down, they'll get darker as they're actually, if they've actually gone through. If you want to find a specific transaction, search right up here. Let's say I want to look for everything I bought at Walmart. I'll just type in Walmart and hit search. Everything from Walmart will show up within those 90 days. And if I want to change the range, I can just change it right up there. Now let's go back to the hamburger right over here and go down to cash flow. Now this is going to show me I can toggle between cash flow, our income, or our expenses. So this is comparing this month to last month. So it's the very beginning of a month, so I haven't spent anything this month compared to how much I spent last month. So I'm gonna change this date range to last month. So for the month of April, I spent 7,180, and that's the solid blue line versus the month before that, which is the dotted line. And you can toggle to the income, compare the incomes. I also made a lot more money that month and spent a lot more money. So we're gonna go back to cash flow. And if you scroll down here, these are all of the transactions. Here you can also edit them just like you did. You can change the category here or you can split them. Now let's go to the budgeting category. Hit the hamburger, click on budgeting. Okay, since it's the beginning of the month, I am going to go back to last month. So the outer ring is the current month, the inner ring is the previous month. And this is for all of our spending. So this is comparing all spending, but if we scroll down, this will compare home improvement, and this is this month versus the previous month, and charitable giving, it will compare, it will give you a chart for each of the different categories. And once again, you can click on a category and it will show you how much you spent and it will list out all the transactions. So let's find one, general merchandise. You can see the comparison of the months and you can scroll down to see all the transactions in that category. If you go ahead and click in this circle, you can see a bar chart of your income versus your spending for every month. And this is where you can set your monthly budget. With personal capital, you only get one actual budget per month. You can't specify budgets for certain categories. You just get one overall budget. So if you're using a zero-based budget, say your income is $5,000 a month, then I would put the budget to $5,000 because you want all $5,000 to be going somewhere. If you're looking for a budgeting app that lets you set budgets for each category, then Mint is what I recommend for free. Go to the hamburger, click on Portfolio, and this is going to show all of the investments accounts you have linked. Now you're not seeing very much here because I only have two accounts linked, but it's going to list in order from the one with the most to the least money. And paragraph, the dark blue here matches up with the dark blue there. If you scroll down, it will show you. So inside here, um, it has increased less than 0.01%. So down there, uh, one cent, it's gone up one cent. And if you look down here, the red is negative two cents. And if we click on that, it will show us how it has performed. Let's go back to the hamburger, tick, click holdings and allocations. Now this is going to compare your investments and you can toggle with what you rotate. You click on this square here and you can compare it to S&P 500, US stock, point. let's do S&P 500. So the chart is going to compare, the blue is our funds, the orange is S&P 500. And if you click up here, the little transfer icon screen, you can toggle between, you can look to see your holdings or your allocations, so how everything's allocated. Um, or you can look at the US sector. Go back to the hamburger, click investment checkup. It is going to take a look at your investment. So it's telling me I'm conservative. If I change it to recommended allocation, I could earn 6,000 more by retirement. So let's click on that. It's showing me how all of my stuff's allocated. Now this is not all of our investments. I'm just doing this to show you. Um, we don't have any stocks, but also we'll look at your costs, showing me how I can reduce my costs and how much I could save if I reduce the costs. Okay, right, now let's go to financial planning. Now it will ask you a few questions to get started and then it will show you some awesome information. Ask you your name, your age, how, what, how old do you want to be when you retire? It'll ask you about your marital status. I'm just going to skip forward. How much you currently have saved? How much you spend, save each year? I'm just typing in random numbers. And 
monthly retirement spending, we'll say that. Click next, yearly earnings, I'm gonna type in annual income right there. And now it is going to give you all sorts of information. So success rate means I'm 0% success rate, so that means I am not doing very well. If you click on that, it's going to tell you where I am and what I need to do to change. And if you click on retirement savings, go ahead and click on that. It'll show me how much is recommended versus how much I actually have. Emergency fund, if you click on that, this green range is what they recommend. So they recommend I have 15 to 30,000 saved and it's showing that I only have 8,000 saved. So I need to start saving more and this is how much. And more improvements. Or you can meet with a financial advisor. So click here to schedule a call. If you invite a friend and they create a new personal capital account and link at least one investment account worth $1,000 or more, then you can both get $20. Currently, it is a referral bonus of $20 by Amazon gift card, 20 for you, 20 for them. If you hit the hamburger and get right up here, it says invite a friend, get $20. And that amount might change, but currently it's $20. Just click on that. It is going to pop up with your link. So you can just copy the link to share it with them or click share invite link and you can text it, copy share, however you want to share it. And they have 30 days to sign up with your link and add the investment account and you'll each get a $20 Amazon gift card. If you wanna leave a comment down below, we can become friends and I'll share my link with you. If you wanna check out the personal capital tutorial on your computer, it'll be playing right up there. Otherwise, make sure you're subscribed, hit the bell so you get notified when I have new videos every month with our budget, our budget report, and our net worth update. Thanks so much, see you in the next video.